that I wanted to uh, to once again lay out to the listeners. This lunatic, and it's the only reason that we're even doing this particular show tonight, this lunatic tries to harm people. And he does it from, he tries to be anonymous doing it. But, uh, you know, let's face it, he's such a buffoon that that it never comes off quite like that. But he still has created some real problems for you, hadn't he? Well, yeah. I mean, um, so uh, for years I've been uh, attending the Macworld Expo. Actually, I, I went to the very first Macworld Expo right when they began. It was my very first time, to, my very first trip to San Francisco, in fact. Well, you have you have some rather extensive uh, Mac credentials, yeah. don't you? What what are some of your credentials? Well, you know what. So so the problem, of course, being that I've been taking the task in the quote unquote <laughs> field for being someone who's constantly mentioning his credentials. You can go and do a Google of me and quickly find you know pretty much my entire professional background. I have an actual, verifiable, real background in, in the industry, um, something that a lot of people who play in the sandbox called the paranormal field ultimately don't have. And you know, there are a lot of people who, uh, over the years, had, had felt threatened by the fact that I, you know, when I say I've done certain things, they can actually look these things up. They can find actual published books, real stuff that, you know, supports the notion that I am who I say I am, real kind of basic stuff. So, um the Macworld folks, who I, I, I haven't spoken at a Macworld for a number of years. I used to speak at them quite a bit. And uh, the last couple of years, I got reinvolved with them. And uh, last year, I had done a, a big keynote event, which was a 20th anniversary of Photoshop thing um, with uh, two buddies of mine from Adobe. And uh, very well received. Thing. Actually, the whole thing is up on the Internet, so uh, up on YouTube, so people can watch that if they want. Uh, we even did a demo of Photoshop 1.0 to the audience. We, you know, a 20-year-old piece of software that uh, that we we showed to a, a very appreciative audience. Anyway, um, so what ended up happening was uh, I was slotted to speak again at this most recent MacWorld. I did a, a few different sessions, um, and uh, I had gotten uh, a call actually from one of the people who I deal with at the MacWorld Expo parent company. And uh, they, uh, she said, "Look, we, you know, I need to talk to you about something." She didn't actually didn't want to email me. I thought, "Oh, that's kind of odd." So I called her up. Hey, Kathy, what's going on? Well, David, uh, my legal department has asked me to call you because we got this piece of email. This really odd piece of email that uh, we just want to talk to you about. And she's like, "I, I really kind of want to talk to you on the phone because uh, you know this is just like so out there." And I'm thinking, "Oh no." <laughs> you know, when she says this, I'm like, oh, here it comes. And it turns out Korf had sent these guys an email claiming to be some journalist who wanted to fly in from Europe to do the expo. And uh, he was concerned about his safety because uh, of one of my, my understanding is that a man named David Biedney, uh will be one of the featured speakers of Macworld, although he is not a quote-unquote industry heavyweight, per se, it's like, hey, Cal, uh, you, you might want to get a spell, spell checker, man. You might want to learn how to write, you idiot. Uh, my concern in coming to your event has to do with personal safety. Uh, David Goodney has threatened me with physical violence, blah, blah, blah. And he now, goes into this, did you yeah. ever threaten him with physical violence? You know, Don, at one point when he had been hounding me via email, I had, and it was saying crazy stuff to me. I mean, kind of along the lines of the stuff he had been telling Royce Myers. Anybody who's interested can go and find all sorts of stuff that, uh, in fact, many, many moons ago on the Paracast forums, I had posted some of this correspondence he had with Royce, which Royce gave me to put out there. Um, he wanted people to realize just how deeply demented Corf is. You know, Corf is a delusional lunatic. That's just the deal. And... It's kind of like when I said to you when you, you know, originally wanted me to come on the show, I, I, you know, and I expressed my concern to you that, look, you know, this guy is like mentally unstable, and you know, to give him attention is to feed the beast. He's desperate for attention. Now, look, he had sent, <clears throat> excuse me, he had sent the Macworld people this piece of email 
which essentially really try to do harm to me with them. And, you know, I have a working relationship with them, which I've had for a long time. So the fact that he, in this email, is trying to sort of put me down and, you know, he's not an industry heavyweight per se. It's like, well, no, actually, Corf, I am. So, and, and these people are friends of mine, and you're sending this, and it's not like they believe anything you're saying. Um, but the fact that he would go and do something like this is the kind of thing that's really so above and beyond anything reasonable. It really is. And, and so what ended up happening, you know, your, your question about whether or not I ever threatened him, at one point when I tried to basically push this guy away from me and he was getting belligerent via emails, I sent him a piece of email saying, hey, listen, you know, back off or you, you don't want to meet me. And, hey, listen, uh, <laughs> what can I say? This guy was really pushing buttons and I just said, hey, back away. You know, I don't want to deal with you. And really, it came down to me understanding that this guy was unhinged and that, you know, I have no reason to want anyone like this anywhere near my life. Um, so I basically sent him an email saying, you know, back off, get away. And in his, you know, demented state, in his delusional mind, he sort of takes whatever he wants and twists it to mean whatever he wants it to mean. I mean, the guy lives in a fantasy world. Well, there's there's a reason why he is living currently in the Czech Republic and he has not been back to the States. I mean, there mm-hmm. are several individuals here just waiting for him to land so they can serve him with lawsuits. Right. And right. <clears throat> his family have, apparently has a fairly colorful history with, you know, uh, creating problems for people. Um, so it, it, originally, my the whole way that I got to be in the position where I'm even talking to about this was at one point me essentially extending a hand of support when I realized that he was engaged in a debate with another idiot, Michael Horn. You know, uh, uh, another just kind of a whack job, delusional, psychotic, hateful, abusive stalker. This field has no uh, lack of these kind of people, Don. And one of you know, and and I'm glad to be away from this because of the fact that I don't necessarily want to interact with folks like this. Um, certainly not someone like Korf, who, yeah, is uh, is he's he's unhinged. And basically trying to do stuff like this with people who are professional associates is, is really, you know, it's obviously legally questionable, except the fact that to try to get any kind of legal satisfaction or to try to, you know, keep him at, at arm's length, uh, you know, financially is not something that, look, if I had real lawyers and real money, I could go to Google and get them to pull down that hateful YouTube video, which unfortunately, when you plot my name into Google, um, it's at the very uh, top of the hit list because of the fact that Google owns YouTube. But there is one one saving grace, David. If you go up and you look at how many views these things have had over the last few years, I mean, it's absolutely laughable. Oh, I understand that, Don, but, but the problem being that at this point in time, right, if you're... Uh, looking to certainly do freelance consulting work if you're looking to do full-time or part-time work for companies. You know, the most basic level of due diligence that they're going to do, hopefully, is Google your name. Now, when I got involved with the Paracast, I mean, I, I knew that I was creating some future problems potentially. And, and you know, did I really think out the ramifications of what I was doing to a degree where I, I really thought it out and thought, okay, you know, should I, should I get involved in doing this show? No, because I actually felt compelled to talk about this material, about these topics. Um, but uh, the simple fact of the matter is that when somebody types my name in, and this thing is at the very top of the list, for a lot of people, this is the kind of flack that will basically be a huge red flag. You know, to do any kind of due diligence in, into this guy is to realize that, yeah, he's a cyber stalker. He's cyber stalked a number of people. Um, he's someone who has shown this kind of delusional behavior for many years. Well, as a matter but, of fact, he's listed on a website devoted to cyber stalking. There you go. 
So, but the problem being that most people will not do that kind of due diligence on him, and instead will, unfortunately, uh, uh, hit that first line of Google foo, see that, not do any due diligence in, into who he is, but basically it's a guilt by association thing. Well, and, well, Don, here's the thing. I mean, that video definitely violates uh, YouTube's own uh, standards uh, in terms of policies, in terms of hate speech. Uh, and I've alerted that to them. And look, at one point, a bunch of Paracast audience members had flagged that to uh, to, to YouTube, but sadly, without having real money to pay to a lawyer to go after this kind of stuff, uh, this kind of stuff continues unabated, and it's a huge problem. So, so in that sense, yeah, there is some catharsis in talking to you about this, but at the same time, you know, we, we have to realize that part of the problem with this is that essentially it continues to feed his beast. It gives him the attention that he wants. It, you know, he'll he'll do anything for attention, and and sadly we're fulfilling that. And you know, so in that sense, I definitely I approach I approach this whole thing uh, sort of with a sense of uh, a little bit of dread, but also you know it's good to be able to talk about this a little bit. I haven't really told anybody about that MacWorld thing, um, but yeah, it's a huge pain in the ass and. You know, it, it, it definitely its the kind of thing where if he were in front of me, he'd have to answer for this. Am I threatening him? Hey, listen, you know, we're men. You know, what the hell, man? If you get in front of me and threaten me and try to mess with my life, don't think I'm not going to do anything to defend myself, especially if you were, like, standing in front of me. You know, well, you and you and I both know that that, David, is never going to happen. Look, I, I've got to wrap right. I've got to wrap this segment up. I still have uh, one more to do, and then the round table. So what? What I you would... got me worked up at the end there, and and and, and man, I, I should I should be way more even keeled about all of this because look at the source, right? It's just like the village idiot. But, <laughs> boy, you know. Well, David, we're going to have you back for the round table. So, my friend, I want to thank you so much. You're very welcome, Don. Thank you. Okay, and now. My last single interview is with a longtime acquaintance of Cal Korf, somebody that literally goes back to when uh, he was in junior high school. Tina, coming up right now. Tina, first, I want to thank you for joining us for this edition of Dark Matters Radio. I know that uh, this cannot be uh, a pleasant thing for you uh, because of some of the uh, situations that happened. Let me ask you, why, why were you willing to come on the radio and discuss this? Well, because I do believe that the truth does need to be brought out to the light. Okay, you, you've actually known Corf going all the way back to junior high school, correct? Yes, that's where we met in seventh grade. Okay, now, uh, after school, how long was it before uh, you had any other contact with him? And, and how did you, uh, did your contact still uh, come about? Um, I had seen him, the last time I physically seen him was in 86 or 87. And then in 2008, I dropped by on classmates.com and told him hi, and we talked a little bit then, and his uh, issue of his brother had come up. And then again in 2010, in February, he got on Facebook, and I got an email asking to you know check out his page on Facebook. And it took me about a few days to a week to decide to do that because my intuition was telling me maybe I shouldn't. And I said, ah, what the hell, threw it to the wind, and I went ahead and contacted him and he was rather surprised, and it just kind of took off from there. Okay, now, uh, a lot of the things that uh, he's talked about up there, like, for example, being a colonel in a quasi-military type organization, uh, and, and a lot of these things, fighting terrorism around the world, nanotechnology, and some of these more outlandish claims, did, did he lay that stuff on you? Oh, yeah, he had tried to, you know, tell me to do something. Well, the colonel says, well, I don't care who you think you are, you know, you don't tell me what to do. Well, did you, did you believe that? 